What happens when our crop nutrition plan doesn't go necessarily according to plan? Stay tuned and we'll learn more on advancing crop nutrition. I'm Sherry Cook, and in this series, we'll be talking to farmers, advisors, and experts, and we're going to see how they're advancing crop nutrition. On episode three, we talked about how much fertilizer your corn plant uses during that corn sprint. Now we're here in the middle of a growing season to see how that all shakes out. Today we're here at United Farmers Co-op and we've got some great folks to interview. So would you please introduce yourselves? Yes, Sherry. So I'm Mark Hoekstra, an agronomist for United Farmers Co-op. So I work with growers. We provide seed, chemical fertilizer, uh, consulting, and I also help with any sort of agronomic issues and then um, do some like trial work here for the co-op. My name is Ryan Mokatoon. I'm a grower in the area. So you have a unique situation too, where you work with a group of farmers, right? We have one line of equipment for our three farms. Our three farms are still individual farms, but we kind of cost share equipment and work together to get the job done. Awesome. What's happening with you guys at this time of the year? Yeah, so this time of year, a majority of the crops are already planted and we're doing some fertilizer applications, top dressing on corn or side dressing corn, some sweet corn fertilizer, some alfalfa fertilizer and then a lot of crop protection applications are being made this time of year. And how do you guys work together? You know, we talk about what our goals are for the year, and then we put together our crop nutrition plan. It's multiple applications. A lot of times, late summer, we're working on fertility plans for the following year, and we spread in the fall, and then we also apply on hydras for them in the fall. And then other fields, we spring spread, and then they do top dressing applications as well. So there's numerous times throughout the year that we're actually executing the the plans. Pretty much in August, we sit down and just kind of work what's going to be planted where next year and just have a general baseline of what's going to happen. And as the season goes on, as we get after fall, we'll see if the fall gave us what we planned, you know, and then we may have to pivot from there. I look at it, I think it starts probably with a soil test, right? To see what we have, what we don't have. When we're talking about nutrition planning, mm-hmm. right? Let's see what we're dealing with. And then obviously the yield goal plays into that. It has to, right? So mm-hmm. we know how much fertilizer yeah. to put on. Yeah. There are times, and that's where I've said, you know, we've ebbed and flowed between, you know, are we going to do a two year spread? Are we going to spread ahead of the soybeans, uh, two years ahead of the corn, you know, owned, rented, long term, all those types of things I think play into all of those scenarios when we put together a plan. So, I mean, it's not one singular thing. It's not a yugal goal just for the farm. It's field individual. Yes. Not every field is the same. I mean, right. You got pattern tile fields versus fields of no drainage, you know, you know, different soil types. So it's different yield goals for different fields. What's the biggest affecting factor? Weather. Weather. Yeah. One thing we can't control, we can't control right? Yeah. Weather. weather can pivot our plan all the time. I think two years ago we had a two inch rain three miles north on my farm where I had a couple farms and we got nothing in my place and it was a dry summer and it was worth 25 to 30 bushels, that two inch rain. So how did you adjust your nutrition plan? You knew it was dry. Did we cut back on, say, the nitrogen that you put out there? That year we kept the plan as was. So, you know, it wasn't overly dry. Mm -hmm. Now, last year it was extremely wet in our area. Then we pivoted the plant and we added some more urea to the side dress application, which paid tremendously, I think. Yeah, and I would say in our geography here, you know, heavier soil types, you know, we're definitely hurt more by excessive moisture than too little. Let's hone in a little bit on nutrition plants and what you put in. We have Aspire, which is Mosaic's potassium enhanced with boron. So how do you utilize that product in your plants? I utilize Aspire in my plants as obviously a K and a boron source. Historically, you know, boron on alfalfa has been really good. And um, we've started to focus more, um, you know, applications on for row crop production as well. Here's Leanne to talk more about how potassium interacts with other crop nutrients. Potassium is a lot like the framing materials in your house. It helps to keep that house nice and sturdy and strong. And that's how it is in our plants. Potassium plays a huge role in keeping those plants 
sturdy and strong throughout um, stressful conditions. Something that we talk about a lot in soil fertility is Liebig's law of the minimum, meaning that if you are short on one nutrient, that could be limiting your yield and it could also be limiting the uptake of other nutrients as well. So with potassium, it's really helping with the photosynthesis process and it helps with a lot of the processes in the plant that are important for reproduction and growth. And so it's very important that we have enough there. It interacts with other nutrients in the soil like nitrogen. And so we wanna make sure that there's adequate potassium so we're not limiting any crop growth and we're not limiting uptake of other nutrients like phosphorus or nitrogen. Stay tuned for our next episode where we actually go out to the farm. We'll be back visiting with Mark and Ryan about how we balance agronomics and economics and see the fruition of a good crop nutrition program. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Advancing Crop Nutrition. Be sure to like, subscribe, and tell a friend about our show. And cut! For more information on crop nutrition, check out cropnutrition.com. Keep up to date and be sure to subscribe to Advancing Crop Nutrition.